control surface check left right back forward left right good to go i uh, haven't messed with flaps yet there's 50 percent and there's 100 percent so uh but this time uh, we're gonna get up there uh high rates we'll go right into high rates and uh, we'll get it up and uh, take a look at the difference in the way the airplane flies in high rates. So hold off. Let's take a look at uh, takeoff distance too here. So we're trying to do a minimum distance takeoff. <laughs> I think it was like 10 feet. Oh God, I have to tell you, I love this airplane. 10 feet takeoff. Uh, with no flaps All right So we're in high rates now and if you notice the airplane is touchier. It's responding faster. All right. Well You can see rolls right over uh, How much faster this airplane is responding to everything uh, in high rates now The high rates are certainly no problem Um I don't, I'm not, it's not like I'm having any issue flying it around in high rates, but I have like 20 flights on this airplane now. So, let's get a little speed check. So, flat and level flight. Oh man, I think it's doing about 64. It's wanting to climb just a little at the top speed. I think that camera is throwing off CG just a touch just a touch so zero throttle try to get you out of the sun there and let's let's do a loop keep an eye on that G meter full speed full Full speed, full. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to see how many G's. I'm thinking like six and a half, seven G's. Uh, now I'm no expert. I've only been uh, doing these uh, telemetry flights for, you know, I've got about five of them in, so. But boy, what a what a great airplane! Let's uh, so I'm in the high rates. We'll do a right roll, left roll. Uh, I mean, you can see this thing just snaps around like it's nothing. She's wanting to climb a little, so I'm gonna bring try to bring it in a little lower, and uh, we'll we'll try to juice it a little. I'm not gonna call it a high speed pass, but. So there's full speed. So there's full speed, almost flat flying. Slight climb, so. What we'll do is we'll climb out. I'd be willing to bet that thing is hitting somewhere in the neighborhood of 70, 75 miles an hour. Now again, this is on 3S, right? So there's definitely guys out there flying it with the speed control it comes with 4S. Um, I'm just flying at 3S right now. And, you know, I'll tell you, usually I bring this plane in a little bit lower, uh, a little bit lower and a little bit slower, but man, I got that sun off my right shoulder that is just, it is, uh, it is bright this morning. Holy cow, is it bright. Well, the wind is actually giving this thing a little toss. I will uh, we'll try to bring it in a little bit lower.
just about min speed right there that I would really want to be messing around. See, right at that point where we made the turn and I was rolling the wings to the right, it got really hard to perceive where the wings were. And I was not even directly into the sunlight. Fast roll, slow roll. And again, this is at high rates. So I've pretty much been flying in high rates at this point. I feel pretty comfortable with this airplane and I feel pretty comfortable with this flying site. I, I've flown here a pretty good amount. Um, and I'll tell you, I really am convinced that that has a pretty big effect, especially with helicopters. Um, the site that I usually fly at is downward sloping away from me and it so I can fly the helicopters and, and airplanes like straight even with my eye sight and uh, I've got plenty of room under me so in flying here at this airfield I'm on level ground so in order to keep the airplane a little bit away from the ground I have to fly higher um, and it changes the whole perspective. And again, I don't have a ton of experience. So for me, that's been a little bit of an obstacle to get used to that different perspective. <laughs> what a great flying little airplane. We should kick this battery alarm any second now. Inverted. Oh, it's hanging up on the prop. Oh man. Wow, if I had this aircraft lower, uh, that would have looked great to have on the first person view. Uh, Cause it was pretty much in a stall hung up on the prop. And like I said, I, I, I know I've said this like five times, but that's with 65% travel. So that just gives you an idea of how capable this aircraft is. I just put it into uh, a hover pretty much with 65% travel. So you can imagine if I had full travel, how easy that would be. This air. Turn, slow roll. Okay, we got we got the 9.9 .9 volt. We just got our first uh, battery alarm, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring it in, and uh, we'll see where we're at. Of a little bit of a hard landing there. So no fear, field clear. Hold mode. Hold mode. And uh, let me just make sure. That, yeah, the camera looks fine. Okay. 
Okay, so just coming back to see where this battery is at. So this is a 11.1 volt 3 cell 2200. Unfortunately, I didn't get a flight time there because when the alarm went off, again, I hit clear, so it reset the timer. But uh, let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, so it's at 11%. Now it's at 12%, 11.6, 11.7. I would call that like, you know, for me personally, I don't want to run it that low and there's no need to run it that low. So I'm going to up it to, let's just see where it is. Uh, telemetry and volts. And I'm going to go to 10.2. Okay, 10.2. Now, I mean, I liked the alarm. It was good. It didn't bother us the whole flight. And then when it went off, we came around and landed. Uh, I probably should have just backed off and on the throttle a little bit and, and the alarm would have stopped and then we could have tracked the flight time. By going to 10.2, when that alarm goes off next time, all I got to do is just back off on the throttle a little bit. The alarm will stop, get the plane around and land it, and I'll be able to track the flight time a little better.